So, for starters, I'm going to use my, um, <laughs> I'm going to use my terrible acronym now. I, yeah, I, I, no one has yet come up with a better, like a way that makes the C not look awkward there. So anyway, um, I'm going to factorize first. So have a look at that numerator. What can I do? What have I got? Cool, that works for me. Doesn't need to be done on the denominator, so that looks good. Having factorized, I can use that to work out the asymptotes and the intercepts, okay? Um, firstly, the uh, vertical uh, asymptotes. Uh, I can see that there's going to be, if I draw my set of axes here, there's going to be a single vertical asymptote. What is it? Okay, let's be a little more specific. It's a vertical asymptote, so it's actually x equals zero. So um, I'm gonna put that on, and I'm also going to label it. So this is the y-axis, x equals zero. Got that guy. No other vertical asymptotes. Now, like I said, the question gave you a clue. It said, hey, um, you've got a horizontal asymptote of one, but how could we tell that without them giving us the clue? Because we can't. Yeah, very good. You're looking at the top and the bottom, you compare them, and you're like, they're growing at more or less the same rate. The minus x and the minus 2, they shrink away into insignificance next to the x squared. So therefore, these are really going to the same value, okay? So therefore, um, y equals 1, there is my horizontal asymptote, okay? Um, Worth pointing out that you know how we said, oh, they are approaching the same value, right? But which one will be bigger? When x is, when x is um, over here, when x is a positive value, do you see that this number will just be a little bit smaller than this one, right? A tiny bit. So therefore, you're going to have a smaller numerator than the denominator. That's below 1, isn't it? Like say 99 over 100 is below 1. Whereas if you turn it upside down, if you go negatives, right, what will happen? Ah, now interestingly in this case, I think we're going to get the same thing because, oh wait, no, yeah? No, yeah, no, you were right. Because that double negative in there means you go just above, okay? Because, yeah, so you'll get like 199 or something of that nature. So I know I'm going to approach this side from below and this side from above. I've got this guy here. Okay, can we find out anything else? Well, we've got our asymptotes. How do I work out my intercepts now? Yep. So when y equals 0, I'm finding x-intercepts, and I read that off the numerator. So I can see that's going to be... Yep, so let's put negative 1 here, and 2 is over here. Um, and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some regions in. Okay, so... Here we go. Yeah. Correct, because vertical asymptotes, the reason why graphs can't cut vertical asymptotes is because vertical asymptotes come from discontinuities, which by the very, like, by the word discontinuity, it means you're not there. The graph can't exist there. Um, you can't put in x equals zero, the graph, the function just explodes. On the other hand, horizontal or oblique asymptotes, they don't tell you anything about what's happening in here. They only tell you about what's happening around here, which is why in the middle of the graph, the horizontal asymptote might as well not exist, so we can cross it, okay? Uh, which we will come to in a second. So I'm going to do my regions now, okay? So x minus two, x plus one, and I'll come to this one in a second. So here's what x minus two looks like. Here's what x plus one looks like. Now, x squared, right? I'm actually not going to draw it in because it's always positive or, or zero, right? So therefore, it's, it never changes the sign of the whole object, right? Um, no matter what value of x I put into here, you're dividing by a positive number. If you have a number and divide it by something positive, it'll stay whatever sign it was before. Positive divided by positive is positive. Negative divided by positive stays negative, okay? So I'm actually going to ignore him. I can do the rest of this, though. Let's have a look. So, on the left here, oops, I rubbed that out. On the left here, um, I've got two negative factors. So, two negatives gives me a positive, like so. Okay. Uh, down here, I've got a positive and a negative, so I'm going to go negative. And then over here, it switches one more time. Okay, so these are the regions that I'm going to go through. Okay. 
Now, lastly, they did give us the clue. They said, hey, you're gonna cross the horizontal asymptote. This happens quite a lot, actually. So how do I work out where that happens? Well, I let x equal, sorry, I let y equal the horizontal asymptote, y equals one. So if that's the case, I'm gonna go one equals um, x squared minus x minus two on x squared, yeah? And this is very easy to solve. What will I do to both sides? Yep, so I multiplied across. I've got an x squared on both sides, bam, bam. Now what? Yeah, I'm going to add x to both sides. Ta-da! So there's negative 1. I've got to keep my scale on the horizontal axis. I've got to keep it consistent. So there's negative 2. So there is where I cross. Okay. So I've got an intercept there, an intercept there, a crossing there. Do you remember that we said we were going to approach this asymptote, the horizontal one, from beneath? Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Look, I can, I can see how it's going to happen there. So in fact, I'm just going to draw that in. Right, so that's really easy. It goes from positive down to negative, and it, it's obeying all these asymptotes. Over here, you can see, well, I'm going to have to go down to join these two points that I know and go toward this asymptote. But I have to come back toward the horizontal asymptote. So that's why it approaches from the top on this side. Okay, so I'm going to do this, like so. Okay, now ordinarily, uh, before this topic, I would stop at this point. Okay, but because now I know calculus, I can actually go a little bit further because there is a stationary point on this graph and I can locate its position. How do I do that? All right, let's differentiate. So dy on dx, as we were pointing out before, I'm going to avoid differentiating as much as I can because it's a quotient, which requires the quotient rule. But I have to do it at least once to find this stationary point. So let's do it. Uh, v is x squared. u dash will be 2x minus 1 uh, minus u x squared minus x minus 2 times v dash, which is 2x, Okay, all divided through by x to the 4, yep. Okay, now this looks like a big garbled mess, but I'm, I'm crossing my fingers really hard and hoping it's going to work out. So that's going to give me 2x cubed minus x squared. Watch out for your sign here. I'm not even going to touch it. I'm going to do the expansion first. You're going to get 2x cubed, that's convenient, uh, minus 2x squared minus 4x. Okay, so I can see cancel, cancel. Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> I have a denominator. That's an easy thing to forget. Uh, I have minus x squared plus 2x squared. So how many x squareds are there? Two. Well, sorry. Minus 1 There's plus 2. It's just a single x squared. Minus, minus 4x, that's plus 4x, like so. x to the 4. Okay, now this is interesting. I can factorize this. Why did you know to factorize? You're right. Why did we know to do that? <laughs> it looks like a mess. Um, I know to factorize because you're looking for when this is zero, right? So I'm going to take out a factor of x, which leaves you with x plus 4, like so. Now, it looks like x equals zero would make this zero, but it doesn't. Do you see why? Because actually, it's, it's a discontinuity. So you only have a solution at x equals negative 4. Do you see that? Now, if I didn't know anything about this graph, I would have to go further. I'd have to use a second derivative or a first derivative table of values in order to work out what on earth is going on here. But I don't need to do that, do I? I already know what kind of stationary point this is by, like, it can't be a minimum, right? Um, so I know where it is as well. There's minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. So I need to move this over a little bit. That's where it turns, right there, okay? And now that I have calculus, I'd be expected to also find the coordinates, minus four comma, we can work this one out. Uh, 16 plus 4 is 20, minus 2 is 18, divided by 16, which is 9, uh, 9 on 8. Ta-da.